Deep within a dark and gloomy chamber during medieval times, a chilling silence hung in the air, occasionally disrupted by distant cries of pain. In this dreadful place, an accused individual would be stripped of all clothing and left vulnerable on the cold and unforgiving floor. Ropes tightly bound their limbs, leaving them immobilized and at the mercy of a horrifying punishment. The method was simple, yet sinister. An immense weight, comprised of heavy iron and unyielding stone, would descend upon their chest. The unrelenting pressure would squeeze the life out of them, making every breath a desperate struggle. With each passing moment, their fate teetered on a sharp edge as the weight bore down, threatening to snuff out their existence. This is the chilling account of Pressing to Death or Pen Fortidur, one of the cruelest execution methods in ancient times that instilled terror even in the bravest hearts. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Pen for Tadur Pressing to death or pen for Tadur was a form of punishment used in the common law legal system when someone accused of a crime refused to plead guilty or innocent or remained silent. It involved putting a heavy weight on the accused individual until their last breath. While this dark practice was prevalent in England, it was known to have spread across different civilizations, leaving behind tales of victims and cities that had fallen victim to this dreadful execution. One such victim was Giles Corey. Standing as the lone individual to suffer such a horrific punishment of pressing to death on American soil, Giles Corey had a terrible fate befell upon him. In 1692, Giles Corey, an 81-year-old farmer who lived in the southwest corner of Salem Village, nestled within the Massachusetts Bay Colony, was accused by the villagers who harbored ill feelings towards him of witchcraft. Before his arrest, Corey's wife, Martha, had already faced accusations of witchcraft on March 19th. However, in a surprising turn of events, Giles initially testified against his wife, only to later recant his statement. Because of his act of contradiction, many doubted his character. Moreover, Corey had previously been convicted of killing a thief who had stolen apples from his farm, causing many to sneer at him. Knowing his fate was sealed with these accusations weighing heavily on him, Corey firmly refused to enter a plea and maintained an unwavering silence in the face of his accusers. As days turned into months, Giles Corey awaited his trial, set to take place on September 17th of the same year. When the faithful day arrived, he proclaimed his innocence in response to the charges, yet adamantly refused to subject himself to trial by the court. Corey argued that the court had already determined his guilt relying on the testimonies of individuals who had testified in previous attempts. And having witnessed the unjust treatment of his wife during her trial, Giles Corey vowed not to succumb to the same tragic fate. Fueled by a defiant spirit, he resolved to resist the court's demands. Little did he know that his refusal would plunge him into a horrifying ordeal known as Pen Fortidur. However, the trial descended into a spectacle devoid of justice and fairness. Among the evidence the court had on Corey, a pivotal piece of evidence against him was a deposition given by a 12-year-old girl named Anne Putnam, who had claimed to have seen the specter of Giles Corey, urging her to document his evil deeds in a diabolical book. Desperate to elicit a plea from Corey, the court resorted to the dreadful torment of pressing to death. Stripped of his garments, he was laid flat on the cold ground, a sturdy board placed upon his fragile body by Captain John Gardner of Nantucket, his executioner. Relentlessly, heavy stones were piled upon the board, inflicting severe pressure on his weary frame. Giles Corey, 
would then endure a day-long torment in an empty field on Howard Street near the Salem Village Jail. Despite the unrelenting pain that ravaged his body, his spirit remained unyielding and he steadfastly refused to enter a plea. Legend has it that in Giles Corey's final moments, as the weight of stones bore down upon him, he uttered, more weight. Witnesses also believe this to be his surrender to death as the crushing burden took its toll. Yet the torment did not end there. The following day brought an even greater burden as the executioner added more stones, escalating Giles' suffering to an unbearable level. Finally, on September 19, 1692, after enduring two agonizing days of being pressed, Giles Corey drew his last breath. Margaret Clithrow Once upon a time, in a period known as the English Reformation, religious beliefs carried immense weight, often determining the fate of individuals. The ruling powers considered those who followed faith wrong and faced the terrifying prospect of execution. It was a time marked by the reign of Queen Mary in 1554, witnessing the burning of numerous Protestants at the stake. Later, Queen Elizabeth I also enacted strict measures outlawing Catholicism during her rule. Even providing shelter to a Catholic priest during this era was deemed a crime punishable by death. Tragically, this was the fate of a woman named Margaret Clithrow. In 1586, Margaret Clithrow, who had already faced imprisonment for refusing to attend angelical church services, was accused of harboring an outlawed Catholic priest in her home. Fully aware of the dire consequences, Margaret resolved to avoid a trial that would force her family to testify against her. Little did she know that her unwavering determination would lead to her unimaginable suffering. On the fateful day of March 25, 1586, Margaret became the center of a gruesome public spectacle. Taken to a prominent bridge where her fate would be sealed, she was stripped of her clothing before the prying eyes of onlookers, having endured a degrading and a humiliating ritual. As Margaret's limbs were tightly bound with robes, stretching her body to its limits, a heavy door was placed upon her chest, symbolizing the weight of her alleged transgressions. Slowly and meticulously, weights were added, accumulating upon her. Throughout this prolonged torture, Margaret was given the opportunity to plead guilty or not guilty, which would have resulted in the trial and almost certain conviction and execution. However, Margaret remained resolute, steadfastly refusing to utter a plea. As the executioner piled stone upon stone onto the wooden board covering her fragile form, Margaret's body became engulfed in an insurmountable weight, surpassing 800 pounds. Eventually, the pressure grew unbearable, causing her spine to snap under immense strain. Her ribs ruptured, piercing through her delicate skin until her brave spirit was extinguished in a mere 15 minutes as she took her final breath. Matthew Ryan In 1740, a haunting incident occurred within the walls of the Kilkenny Assizes, leaving the onlookers chilled to the bone. During this time, a man named Matthew Ryan was accused of highway robbery. Finding himself at the mercy of a ghastly execution known as pressing to death, Ryan resorted to an unusual strategy to evade justice. Hence, he decided to feign madness, adopting the demeanor of a lunatic. Stripping off his garments within the confines of the jail, he cast them aside and adamantly refused to put them back on. However, he was escorted to the court to face his trial in this chaotic state. Inside the courtroom, Ryan persisted with his charade, acting mute and refusing to enter a plea. His obstinacy led the judges to call for a jury to investigate and determine whether his silence and madness were divinely inflicted or deliberate pretense. The jury swiftly returned with a verdict declaring Ryan's condition to be a deliberate act of willful and affected dumbness and lunacy. Despite this declaration, the judges implored the prisoner to present his case. However, Ryan continued to feign ignorance of the proceedings unfolding around him, 
According to the law, the penalty for such refusal was the severe punishment known as pen fortidur. Yet, showing mercy and hoping that Ryan would grasp the gravity of the circumstances, the judges decided to postpone the implementation of this punishment to a later date. When Ryan reappeared in court, he maintained his uncompromising stance and once again declined to enter a plea. Consequently, the court issued the dreaded sentence, he would be pressed to death. Two days later, he was executed in the public marketplace of Kilkenny. However, it was reported that as heavy weights weighed down the wretched man's body, he pleaded desperately to be hanged instead. Unfortunately, the sheriff was powerless to alter the prescribed method of punishment, leaving even this small concession beyond his reach. Mr. Strange Ways In 1676, a faithful event unfolded, revealing a tale of passion and justice as the honor of a brave soldier named Major Strangeways was tarnished by a tragic accusation. Accused of taking the life of a lawyer who had shamelessly enticed his beloved sister, his case was brought before the common law court. However, Major Strangeways, resolute in his stance, refused to enter a plea. Consequently, he faced a harrowing fate, pressed to death at the Old Bailey Press Yard. This sinister place housed a merciless contraption, cunningly crafted to extract confessions through the exertion of excruciating pressure on the human body, ultimately leading to a swift demise. The apparatus, a sinister creation, was meticulously designed to exert force directly upon the heart, hastening the arrival of death. Major Strangeways was subjected to this relentless mechanism. As the crushing weight descended upon him, his countenance transformed from pale white to a somber hue of ebony. The weight continued to accumulate relentlessly until a staggering load of 400 pounds bore down upon his weakened frame. Astonishingly, even under this immense strain, he managed to cling tenaciously to life. Witnessing this protracted suffering, his loyal companions, driven by a profound sense of camaraderie and empathy, took matters into their own hands. Overwhelmed by compassion and desperation, they courageously leapt onto the press that had become an instrument of torment. Adding their weight to the wooden and iron structure, they sought to hasten the end of their friend's agony. Their combined efforts and a final act of mercy released Major Strangeways from his tormented existence as he took his last breath. So, what are your thoughts on this punishment? Let us know in the comment section below, and remember to hit that subscribe button. To watch more insane and amazing stories, click on the video options on the screen. You won't regret it.